Um, so I'm going to be talking about plot mirroring in Quidditch. Uh, so my paper is a textual examination of how the snitch captures team matchups, wins, losses, mirror the plot of the books they're within, um, how the game of Quidditch is being played even when there isn't a bludger in sight, and even how the snitch symbolizes Harry himself. Uh, the first time this ever really struck me was when I was reading Order of the Phoenix for like the 15th time. And when Harry's going for the snitch that one time, and Malfoy's scrabbling at the back of his hand. And I was like, God, because those are like the same as the umbrage detentions, where Harry's writing those lines at the back of his hand. I was like, J.K. Rowling couldn't have thought of another body part for Harry to get abused. And I was like, oh my God, it's not that she couldn't, it's that she didn't want to. So then I started looking for all these parallels throughout the rest of the books. Um, I was kind of nervous when I started because I didn't want there to be a lot of those line-by-line -line parallels because I thought that'd be a little bit cheap and I thought it was weird that I didn't find those previously. Um, but when I really started looking, um, we can go back, but whatever. When I really started looking, um, I found micro and macro parallels. There's some that don't happen chronologically. There's some that happen on a completely macro level for the entire plot of the book. And there's a lot of those like cute kind of fun line by line ones where I'm like, oh, that happened, that happened already. It happened in Quidditch and it happened in the story. I'm so excited. Um, so I use the term plot mirroring instead of nested narrative or story within a story because Quidditch is part of the larger plot. It can't be taken out as a separate story. It doesn't exactly needs to be there because there is so much Quidditch. Um, and I love Quidditch as an athlete. So people who complain about Quidditch or don't like it, I understand there's problems with it, but um, after reading about it so much, I was like, how could people skip over the Quidditch? Because it's literally like on every single page in the entire book. So the basic format I'm going to go through is to go through book by book, gives fast facts on each book. And then I have these tables, um, which I actually took from another presenter who was last year. And they were doing also like a mirroring, a plot mirroring. And I was like, oh, that's laid out really well. So I'm going to do it that way. Um, so Sorcerer's Stone, fast facts. Oh, and I have all fan art on most of the pages too. So that's fun. Um, so Quidditch is mentioned 60 times in the Sorcerer's Stone. There's one chapter named after Quidditch. And then I have these quite interesting facts. Uh, we never see a non-Gryffindor game, so we only see two games. And that happens in the majority of the books. We only see the games that Harry plays. He's only a spectator twice in the whole entire series besides the Quidditch World Cup. So he's a spectator twice at Hogwarts. So that's kind of revolving around Harry, obviously. And this is the first instance we see of Voldemort as a kind of seeker. So he's always going after these objects. He's going after the Philosopher's Stone. He's going after the Elder Wand. He's going after the Prophecy. And he's going after Harry. So he's kind of the biggest seeker in the book besides Harry himself. Um, so there's a table. So in Quidditch, uh, Malfoy forces Harry to play Quidditch by throwing Neville's member all for Harry to catch, even though Harry doesn't realize he's catching a sort of snitch at the time. And in the plot, Malfoy is the first person to mention Quidditch to Harry when they're getting their robes fitted. Harry has no idea what it is. Um, in Quidditch, Wood keeps Harry secret from the rest of the teams, and in the plot, Dumbledore has kept Harry secret for 11 years. In Quidditch, Quirrell tries to kill Harry during the first match, but Snape stops him. In the plot, Quirrell tries to get the stone on Halloween, but Snape stops him. Um, in Quidditch, Harry catches a snitch in his mouth by accident, and in plot, Harry catches the stone in his pocket um, by accident when it just appears, because the mirror knows that Harry's not trying to use it, he's just trying to possess it. Um, and in Quidditch, Snape referees a game between Gryffindor and Hufflepuff, and everyone thinks he's going to be the bad guy, but actually he's doing it to protect Harry. And the same with the stone. The trio thinks that he's going after the stone, but he's actually trying to protect it. So that is the kind of mirroring. You can see that's on a micro level where it's like stone, snitch, like that, and then also kind of just general. Um, so when I first did my talk in my bedroom, um, it was an hour long, <laughs> which was super fun. So I took the top five mirrors that I thought were the most interesting and the biggest um, mix of all the different types. But on it, I have like 15 to 20 plot mirrors for every single book. So we're not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not going to keep you here for the rest of your life. Um, Chamber of Secrets, Quidditch is mentioned 43 times. Uh, the Rogue Bludger is named after Quidditch. And in this book, there's only one match described in the entire book. Um, only three games are played as the season's called off after Hermione and Penelope have been petrified right before the Gryffindor Hufflepuff match starts. And that's probably my favorite fan art right there. That guy does awesome paintings. It's pretty cool. Um, in Quidditch, Lucius Malfoy buys the Slytherin team new brooms to get Draco onto the team. And in the plot, he slips the diary into Ginny's book to get Tom Riddle into Hogwarts. Um, in Quidditch, Harry goes for the snitch match against Slytherin, and because Malfoy's unaware of the snitch is next to his ear, he thinks Harry's attacking him. 
and later on in the plot, when Harry and Malfoy duel, uh, Harry speaks parcel tongue, and Justin thinks Harry's setting the snake to attack him. In Quidditch, the rogue bludger smashes into Harry's elbow and breaks his arm, leaving it dangling uselessly at his side. And in the plot, the basilisk fang pierces Harry's same arm just above his elbow. Um, on the way to the Quidditch match, Hermione realizes how the basilisk is moving around Hogwarts, and then Hermione is moved from the plot at that time because she gets petrified. Uh, Prisoner of Azkaban, there's three chapters named after Quidditch. Uh, this is the book in which Harry loses his first match, and this is the only book in which Voldemort makes no appearance, either as Tom Riddle or as an adult. Um, so in Quidditch and the plot, the Dementors both show up when the wind is pouring and the rain is howling and Harry passes out. The Grimm shows up at the Quidditch match and Harry almost dies. The Grimm also shows up uh, when Harry's leaving Privet Drive and he almost gets run over by the night bus. In Quidditch, the Firebolt is assumed to be cursed, and Sirius Black is assumed to be a dark wizard. Obviously, they're both connected as well, because that's why he gets his new broom. Um, Draco and his friends dress up as Dementors, and they're fake Dementors, and Harry fights them off. Harry also fights in the fake Dementor of the Bogart when he's practicing with Lupin. And Wood gives the Gryffindors the order that Harry should be accompanied everywhere before the Slytherin Gryffindor match, just like the Ministry and Hogwarts staff um, give the directive that Harry should be kind of chaperoned everywhere that he goes. So book four, as we all know, there's no Quidditch in Hogwarts in book four, um, but Quidditch is not entirely absent, truly or symbolically. It's mentioned 140 times, or 104 times, 140 would be a lot. Um, and I will go to the next slide. Oh, and this is one thing. So in this book is where I kind of figured out that every single year the Quidditch matches go in the same direction, or in the same order. <laughs> So Gryffindor always plays um, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw every year. It doesn't happen two times because it's called off this year and the Quidditch match was canceled in the last year. Um, when I was reading The Goblet of Fire, the Quidditch Cup actually mirrors the Triwizard Tournament almost completely. Um, the fact that they both happen is the greatest plot mirroring in the book. So Barty Crouch, Ludo Bagman, all sorts of micro mirroring. I'm not going to go through. I have it in my paper, so that's fun. Um, but those two things juxtapose is the biggest macro mirror. Um, a micro mirror is that Krim, Krum catches a snitch but loses the match, and Cedric gets the Triwizard Cup but loses his life, which is sad, so we'll pass on over that. Um, so then in the Triwizard Tournament, it follows the Slytherin, uh, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw like arc. Um, so in the first match of the year, Harry faces a Slytherin challenge. He's going against the dragon. And he always gets the snitch when he's playing against Slytherin, and he catches the golden egg. In the second match of the year, he uses a plant or Hufflepuff symbol, as we equate plants with Professor Sprout, to capture or save three people, exhibiting Hufflepuff traits. And then the second task, he uses Gillyweed to save the three people. Um, in the third match of the year, Harry uses his cleverness to solve puzzles like Ravenclaws do. In the third task, he has to answer the riddle with the Sphinx to get the Triwizard Cup. Order of the Phoenix, there's one um, Quidditch chapter of The Lion and the Serpent. Again, Harry only plays one match because he, Fred, and George are banned after that, and we see our first non-Harry match. Um, Angela's made Quidditch captain and Ron is keeper, new faces and positions on an old team. Um, in the plot, the Order of the Phoenix is resurrected with some new faces. Umbridge refuses to reinstate the Gryffindor team, just like she refuses to teach them defense against the dark arts. Malfoy provokes Harry, Fred, and George, and Umbridge bans them from Quidditch, and Umbridge provokes Harry and then gives him detention. Um, Umbridge has Harry scratch lines with his own hand, and then Malfoy scratches the back of his hand, which is my favorite one, besides the Tribe of the Torment one. Um, and the Gryffindor Hufflepuff match is the first match in Hogwarts that we see where Harry doesn't play, and he's very frustrated. And this marries the or um, mirrors the Order of the Phoenix when Harry's watching it operate but can't join. Half Blood Prince, there are no Quidditch chapters. Harry's now become Quidditch captain. Um, which is weird because he's obsessed with Malfoy the entire time, and when he finally achieves Quidditch captain and finally has his time to dedicate to Quidditch, he essentially abandons Quidditch to be obsessed with Malfoy and then Slughorn. Um, same thing with the plot mirrorings. Captain, and he's made captain against the fight against Voldemort after Dumbledore dies. Um, there's a couple more, but I'm running out of time. <laughs> um, so... Ron's a big problem. It's really a study in Ron Weasley. Harry doesn't get to talk about Quidditch that often because he's obsessed with Malfoy. Ron is talking about Quidditch almost on every single page. The word Quidditch happens um, in conjunction with Ron and his many failings as a Quidditch player 
and human, but whatever. Um, so Harry had never been less interested in Quidditch. He was rapidly becoming obsessed with Draco Malfoy, and he shirks his duties to find the Horcrux with Slughorn. He's obsessed with Draco. Deathly Hallows. This is the last thing. So there's no Quidditch in Deathly Hallows, obviously, because the entire book is a Quidditch match. Um, so it mirrors, and it weirdly mirrors Muggle Quidditch in that at the end of Muggle Quidditch, like if you watch the tournament tomorrow, the Snitch and the Seeker have to return to the pitch for the end of the game, just like Harry has to come back to Hogwarts for the end of the game, for the Battle of Hogwarts, which I thought was interesting. Um, so Harry and Ron and Hermione are trying to practice, mirrors the ways in which they're detained from practicing Quidditch over the years. Kingsley Shacklebot, the whistle blows, the game has begun. The trio were doing one thing while everyone else is doing another thing, like the Seekers doing one thing while the team's doing another thing. And the Battle of Hogwarts, um, the trio travels around trying to find the snitch, et cetera, et cetera. And then the long game has ended, the snitch had been caught, it was time to leave the air, and all was well. Yay! <laughs>